Hi everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. I'm Denise and I'm going to use uh, this deck here. This I'm using this uh, Marchetti Tarot by Chiro Marchetti. And uh, it's for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. And of course I'm looking for uh, also a message to help heal our souls. Besides whatever help we need for the day. Oops, this one wants to pop right out. Well, these cards are just really slippery. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? The King of Cups. Interesting. Okay. Reversed. And the Lovers reversed. And the King of Coins straight up. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay, so with the King of Cups reversed, yikes, that kind of brings in the element of uh, somebody being unreliable and um, manipulative, maybe even a little abusive. Uh, you know, when the King of Cups comes through reversed, it's, it can even be uh, people who cheat. Uh, and I mean, it's interesting that Makes him look kind of like an ice king in this, uh, in the image here. But, uh, interesting, because, you know, the King of Cups straight up is definitely very loving and kind and has a lot of emotional intelligence. So reversed, uh, whatever this is about, um, that's not what's happening. It's not somebody who's in their emotional intelligence and they haven't worked through their issues to get to that place where they can feel clearly. It's more of coming from emotional reactions. So if there's some issue, like because the King of Coins, I mean, that, that has everything to do, King of Pentacles, King of Coins, it has everything to do with, uh, you know, abundance and wealth and, uh, you know, someone who provides for their family. And if it's not that, then it's at least achieving some goals that you've been working on and doing anything to, um, you know, to to move up into a stable place. So I'm thinking that the message here, the combo, because, I mean, we have the lover's reverse, which to me, when it comes in reverse, it's always about learning to love ourselves. So I think that there's a combination here where combined the message has to do with not judging ourselves when i uh, you know if well we've got the stability here but so this could be like a father issue again because i mean we, we have had the emperor come through throughout the week um last week so with the start of this week Again, this is kind of a father figure to me. Now, maybe this is a father figure who was really good at um, making all the money, you know, creating the empire, taking care of the family financially, but he wasn't there emotionally. This feels to me like a, an emotionally unavailable, um, you know, uh, masculine figure. And then if we take it personally, we think there's something wrong with us because our dads didn't give us what they, you know, what we needed, right? I mean, we all have those real needs to be, when we're growing up, there's, the, of course, remember the real needs I always say is it's to be loved and understood and seen and heard and had to have connection and warmth and safety and security. Well, this looks like, we had the roof over our head and, and all the, um, you know, necessities taken care of, but, but dad wasn't around. And so then we kind of look for love in all the wrong places as we're growing up. And boy, you know, who hasn't done that, right? I mean, that's just so common. In fact, we tend to go with one of the saddest things, and I, I get this with clients all the time, and I've experienced myself, 
that our, our kids, when they're growing up, they tend to go towards the parent that they got the least amount of love for because they're still trying to get love from that parent. So, you know, we'll be sitting here feeling like chopped liver while they're, you know, going everywhere just trying to connect with, um, you know, the, uh, the other parent who wasn't there for them when they were younger. <laughs> it's just, it's one of those things that we do because we're trying to overcome our childhood, you know, wounding. That's just the way it works. So as we're growing up, and as our kids are growing up, you may see this this pattern. You know, you have to be you have to be um, cognizant of of the healing process that goes on between all of us. Um, so, on a deeper level, after we have grown up and we are adults, and we you know, and we're taking care of ourselves and we're learning to love ourselves, we do create that stability. We do have the the ability to provide for ourselves and to go after what it is that we really want, and then and then we move up. But w what we need to do is to not cut off from our feelings at all. And if we do cut off from our feelings, then we know that it takes it's an act of self love to get back inside and feel whatever pain that needed to um, you know needed to be processed through, and. You know, because this this card oftentimes has to do with divorces. You know, and and if you if you've grown up in a broken home, you know how painful that is. And sometimes one of the parents or both of the parents at different times can be manipulative to try and, um, you know, get the kids to do what they want or get the kids to love them most things like that. So I don't know what it was like for you growing up, but I'm. Um, but I'm here to say that you deserve to have, you know, emotionally caring and loving parents uh, or, re you know, relationships now in life and to have all the opportunities for strong bonds. You know, you can turn this around into once you love yourself, then the outer world will provide lots of uh, mirrors of love to you. You know, went through friendships, through, this doesn't have to be, you know, love type of relationship. It can be platonic love. It can be par business partnerships. The lovers just brings together people who are of like mind. And it's an opportunity to love and to care and to join forces, basically. So let's use the animal spirit uh, oracle and see, see what the message is there. Okay, so, <laughs> yep, love is all around, oh, bringing your ideas to life, I like that, and and then taking time out here and there, okay, so let's get these cards up here, so, so our theme has to do with uh, bringing our ideas to life, wow. I uh, now that would definitely speak to the uh, the king of coins here. You know, structuring reality, creating reality the way you want to experience it in the future. That's great. And <laughs> this card tells me something more than just the love is always around. Yeah, the love is always there, but also that the universe is bound by law to receive us. So we put our life, our, our ideas, our, our ideas to life. What we do is we put it out there. We have to take action, of course. You get your ideas and then, you know, this guy help, helps you take action and structure it and get it into reality. But at first you're kind of like dreaming it into reality with the King of Cups, right? And then it, and then it manifests. But you have, to, you have to put it out there. And then once, when you put it out there, the universe grabs hold of it. It's like that, you know, the feminine force in the universe, the, the energy is bound by law to receive us no matter what we're putting out there. Everything that we're putting out there will be mirrored back to us. And, and then eventually we will work ourselves to the place where it is just loving. So maybe the message here is 
is kind of like what messages we were getting last week is to take time to meditate. So taking the time out, go into the cave, <laughs> you know, and take the time out to visualize what it is that you want, to bring your ideas to life in your mind's eye and feel it in your gut. Imagine yourself already having the experience and, and know that the universe will, will catch that for you and bring it in. I love the image here. It's like, you know, how nightingales sing all the time. Uh, and in in here it's like, you know, put your ideas to life and then and then the universe will mirror it back to you. It's like this singing here. <laughs> That's another idea too. You can sing if you create a song for what you want to manifest, you know, like a mantra, you can turn it into a song. Um, and sing it to yourself often, because the soul definitely uh, heals that way, much easier through like harmony and music. Uh, if you're trying to heal a specific issue, uh, you know, that, that maybe came from, from like dad not, not being around to, you know, like emotionally care, uh, and any type of a, you know, self-love issue, what what we can do is um, find songs that heal the issue, find songs that um, have you know healthy fathers, healthy loving fathers in the songs, and listen to them. Listen to them often. We can watch movies where there are, uh, you know, the the healthy relationship between children and dads. Probably that would take a Google search, but. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there. Uh, in fact, I there used to be, and I don't remember the name of the website, but they were like, uh, it was like a movie database for healing. Um, you know, it helps to bring up the, the painful past sometimes in movies, and then you can process through the feelings. Um, I have no idea the name of it. I can't remember. It was years and years and years ago. Um, but I bet it's out there. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if you just Google like movies, movies about healing the soul or movies about healing and then whatever the issue is and see what you get. So I do remember one movie, was it A Thousand Acres, I think? That, that one had to do with um, uh well, just Google it. I don't want if I if I say it, it might um, it might come up in the YouTube algorithm as as being uh, challenging words. So I have to be careful. Uh, but yeah, any words that are any movies that heal trauma, that that would be a good one. <laughs> okay, well that's all I have for today for this awesome Sunday. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you see this early or late, doesn't matter what day, message is the same. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Bye.